Hey folks, welcome to Fiddlehead Fiddle Lessons. I'm going to show you how to play the fiddle in cross tuning. So this is done a lot with old time tunes like Ida Red. such a nice resonant sound to it. Okay, so now that you've seen it, let's learn how to do it. Before we get started, I just want to say that if you're an absolute beginner, this is probably not where you should start. You, you should do some more basic things, learn some basic fingerings, scales, learn a, a bunch of tunes before trying to do cross tuning. It's not that it's that much hard technically, it's just will confuse you if you suddenly start doing this, I think. But that's just my suggestion. Maybe you know you wanted to play this way and that's that and you're gonna just learn this way. So I'll leave it up to you, but that's my recommendation. I'd like you to start by playing just a simple A major scale. Again, if you cannot do that or don't know that, this may be, you may wanna backtrack and do some more basic lessons, but that starts on open A. You can do that with an A drone playing. If you're a more intermediate student and you know the lower octave of the A, that'll actually be a really good idea to try that. That starts G1, 2, high 3, open D, D1, 2, high 3, open A. So we will revisit that scale in the cross tuning, so which is sawmill tuning. Okay, so play those scales a little bit, and then once you get in in your fingerings, in your fingers, we can start. We'll, we'll actually tune the retune the fiddle. So to do that, we keep the t top two strings high E and A the same, and then we're gonna let's go down to the low G. We're gonna tune that up to A. I recommend that you use an electronic tuner. I'm just gonna use the open A and the finder tuner. It's close enough for now, let's get the D. So D is gonna be tuned up to E. Well, it didn't stick. If you find that tuning is tense, well, you're not alone. It's a little, it can be tense sometimes. Is my bridge gonna fly off? Okay, so I get a little, now I'll just fine tune a little bit. So right away, you will start to notice a highly resonant sound, a beautiful big sound. And that's why this tuning is so cool. It just makes the music, these tones really ring out. And a lot of certain styles are used, using this. So like old time music is the main one I can think of. Believe it or not though, in India, this is the most common kind of tuning for uh, Indian classical music on the violin. I think they do D, D, A, D, A with lower strings, like viola strings, but it's the same concept as you'll see. You can do lots of cool things. You can do lots of call and response. So anyway, so use a tuner if you're a beginner, and then once you've got it tuned up, go back and do that, that A major scale starting on open A. You may hear more resonance. You may even feel it in your fingers more. I think I do. I, I feel it just on the open A, I feel a lot more vibration. Okay, so after you do that, now to do that lower octave of the scale, this time we don't need G1. We just start on open G and do the exact same fingering as we did when we started on open A. Check it out. And then the 
upper octave, same fingering. So this is huge. If you practice nothing but this, you'll probably figure out sawmill tuning on your own if you just do that a thousand times. We're gonna, I'm gonna give you a few big ideas to help you get there more quickly though in this and some other lessons, okay? So, so you have that, you have the low octave, you have the high octave, you can kind of go back and forth, do your basic patterns, you know, any variations, you know, start to play around with them. Okay, next step, let's play a simple tune in both octaves. So starting on open A, starting on the A string, let's do Mary Had a Little Lamb. I usually teach it starting D, D2, D2, one, open, one. So if we do it in A, starting on A string, we have the same thing, D2, one, open, one, two, two, two. One, 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 two, open E, and A, two, one, two, one, two, two. And now the fun part, we do it in the low octave, exact same fingering. For these old time lessons on cross tuning that I'm doing, I'm gonna to continue to use my color coded tab system that I developed. But just so you know, I'm gonna still call the G string a G even though it's tuned to A. And I'm still gonna call the D string a D even though it's now tuned to E. And the reason is, is that that way the tabs can be consistent with, other, with the tabs you've already learned and you can also, it's just, we'll still distinguish each string, right? So if I, if I call it, suddenly call the G string an A string, you might confuse it with, does that make sense? So keeping them with specific names, G, D, A, E, even though G is tuned to A and D is tuned to E. Hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, on the Fiddlehead page, please just leave a comment or somewhere leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer you in a timely fashion. Okay, so you've done the tune. Uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb in both octaves. Go back and forth, have lots of fun with it. Sing it too, you know, alternating between singing and playing. The final thing I'm gonna give you, which is a very powerful practice tip, is to do this kind of call and response stuff with smaller phrases. So look, let's look at the first bit of Mary Had a Little Lamb. Now do that in the lower octave, starting G2. Now let's do the next piece in the same way, and this time we'll alternate a few times. Down low. High, down low, so if you practice that way, one of the most amazing things about it is that it will be fun. You'll just start to feel like you're having this kind of musical experience. You're having this, there's this conversation happening between the low and the high octaves. And, and I think that's a great thing about this is it'll just get you playing and enjoying the process of playing. But all the while, your brain and fingers are mapping out how this works by doing this call and response. You're seeing, oh, it's the same thing here. This is another reason why it's good to start this when you're already established with standard tuning because it just gets kind of confusing otherwise. And you can pick all different kinds of loops to do or you can even do it, you can do it with any song that you end up doing. Instead of just this whole piece, like we did, maybe just do part of it. Right? 
So we'll, I'll be showing you other similar tunes like this. There's a handful of tunes, probably a lot more, that you could do that, that easily just transpose down. Same exact fingering. You don't have to think that hard or do any recalculation. There'll be other tunes like... Um, and they cross both octaves, and then that we will not be able to transpose it down, if that makes sense. Because if, I, if I'm already playing some notes in this low register, there's no extra set of low strings down here. So stay tuned, I'll be giving you, uh, on Fiddlehead, on the Fiddlehead site, I'm gonna be doing some extra lessons on this, on how to, just some tunes with tabs, sheet music, the whole deal, play along tracks. So keep your questions coming. Hopefully this is useful, hopefully it's fun. And if you like this video, the standard pitch, just, just subscribe to the channel and check us out next time. Okay, thank you all for watching, it's been fun. Go to fiddlehead.com for a progressive step-by-step -step course outline, color-coded tabs, play-along tracks, sheet music, and much more. Thanks for watching the video club. Excellent. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.